Okay, so we saw in the elimination technique video that uh, intersecting straight lines result in um, one point of intersection. and These can be solved either graphically or much more easily by using simultaneous equations. So we looked at the elimination technique in the previous video. Substitution is very similar. With substitution, instead of trying to eliminate one of the variables, we simply substitute one variable into the other. So in this example here, I have my the two equations uh, of the straight lines that I had in the elimination video again, except this time now equation 2 I'm rewriting, rewriting in the form x is equal to y minus 5 over 3. So I'm expressing this as a function of x. I can now substitute this x value into my first equation. So in other words, in my first equation I have y is equal to 7x. Well now I can write this as y is equal to 7 times my x value y minus 5 over 3 plus 3. It's just easier now if I multiply across by 3, it just gets rid of that third fraction. So if I multiply across this equation by 3, I have 3 times y, that gives me 3y. I have this fraction over 3, so that just gives me the fraction, so that when I multiply it out, I have 7 times y minus 35, 7 5 to 35, and then 3 times 3 or 9. So I've skipped a few lines there. If you want, you can work it out, but all I'm doing is multiplying across by 3 to make the algebra a little bit easier. I can now rearrange for y, that gives me y is 6.5, and now that I know my value for y, I can work out my value for x just by substituting it into one of the equations. x is equal to y minus 5 over 3, and that gives me 0 0.05. Let's look at another example. Again, I'm using the same example as the elimination technique just to show you the comparison. So here I have two equations of straight lines again. I want to find the point of intersection. I'll number them equation 1 and 2 as before. And now we want to substitute either the x value or the y value. So let's choose to substitute the y value this time. So here I'm rewriting my second equation as a function of y. So in other words, I'm putting the y on the left-hand side and all my x terms on the right-hand side. I can now substitute this y value into the first equation. So I have 7x plus 4 times my y value is equal to 22. Again, I'm going to multiply across by 7 just to get rid of that fraction of 7. So when I multiply 7x by 7, I get 49x. When I multiply that fraction by 7, I just get the numerator of the fraction. So I've got 4 times minus 15 is minus 60. 4 times minus 10x is minus 40x. And when I multiply 22 by 7, I get 154. Rearranging, I get a value for x as before, 23.78. I can now use this 23.78 value in one of my equations. So here I'm using, using it in equation 1, and that gives me a y value of minus 36.12. You can check that as before, and um, uh, using your x and y values just to check that it aligns with equation 2. Just note here in both these videos, obviously, the final answer that you have will be dependent on the number of significant figures.